Hey folks, everyone knows images size for web viewing should always have a resolution of 72 pixels per inch, right? Actually, I'm sorry, that's a myth. Stick around, I'll show you why it totally doesn't matter. Wait, pixels per inch doesn't matter? It's true. The popular belief that has been cycling around the internet since the internet began that 72 pixels per inch is the law for web images is completely false. The pixel per inch setting makes absolutely no difference when you're viewing the image on a screen. So 72 pixel per inch is perfect for the web, but so is any other number that you could set the resolution to because screens don't even take that number into consideration. I've covered this topic in some of my video courses over the years, and if you dig deep enough, you can find articles on the web that do get it right. But it's easy to miss them among the thousands more that claim that 72 PPI is the only way to keep your web page load times fast and your high resolution images safe from thieves. First of all, let's clarify the difference between DPI and PPI. DPI stands for dots per inch and is intended to designate how many dots of ink an inkjet printer can put down in an inch. But ink dots and pixels are two completely different things. Camera sensors and screens have pixels, so pixels per inch or PPI is what we're really talking about. If you take a look, Photoshop, Lightroom, and any other imaging app worth its salt uses pixels per inch. But if you want to say DPI, that's fine. I'll know what you're talking about. The key to understanding why pixels per inch doesn't matter is the fact that the number of pixels is what determines how much information is in the image, not pixels per inch. A single pixel is the lowest resolution image you could get. In fact, it's just one pixel away from having no resolution. Two pixels by two pixels would be an image made up of four pixels, still not enough to make a picture of anything. A 100 by 100 pixel image has 10,000 pixels. That's quite a few pixels, but not enough to make a very detailed picture, which is why nobody's in the market for a 100p monitor or a 0.01 megapixel camera. 1080p monitors have 1,920 by 1,080 pixels. 4K monitors have 3,840 by 2,160 pixels and a 45 megapixel camera has 8,256 by 5,504 pixels. The number of pixels, not the pixels per inch, is what determines how an image will appear on your screen. This is a 1200 by 800 pixel image and it takes up this much space on a 1920 by 1080 pixel monitor. It will be this size whether the resolution is set to 72 pixels per inch, 300 or 10,000 pixels per inch because the number of pixels in an inch on your monitor doesn't change no matter what you set the PPI to. 1200 by 800 pixels is 1200 by 800 pixels. On a 4K monitor, this is how much of the 3840 by 2160 pixels are taken up by the same 1200 by 800 pixel image. To fit in more pixels, a 4K monitor has smaller pixels. When the pixels are smaller, the image is smaller, but that's because the pixels per inch of the screen changed, not the pixels per inch setting of the image. Just like on the 1080p monitor, this 1200 by 800 pixel image will take up the same space at 72 PPI or any other PPI setting. So why do we even have the pixel per inch setting then? The answer is for printing. As we just saw, the only way to change a pixel size on a screen is to change screens. But printers can print pixels to be any size you choose. The pixel per inch setting doesn't tell a monitor anything, but it does tell a printer how big each pixel should be. Changing the size of the printed pixels does change the size of the printed image. To get a better idea of how this works, we need to understand the two main ways to change image size. The first one, which I just explained, is to leave the number of pixels the same, but make those pixels larger or smaller by changing the pixel per inch setting. If 72 pixels fit in an inch, the pixels would be much larger than they would be if you could fit 300 in an inch. But if the pixels get too big, then we can clearly see them, something we call pixelation. Somewhere around 150 pixels per inch is where we begin to see the pixels if we're up close to the image. 
The other way to change image size is to leave the pixels the size they are and increase or decrease the total number of pixels. Fewer pixels makes a smaller image and more pixels makes a larger image. This requires what Photoshop calls resampling. It sizes the image by either throwing pixels away or creating entirely new pixels. Changing the number of pixels will change the size of the image both in print and on a screen. The pixels on a screen can't be made larger or smaller, so the PPI setting doesn't even apply. But I know some of you are thinking, sure, Sean, we believe you that the image won't be a different size on screen, but a 72 pixel per inch image will still have a smaller file size, so it'll load faster and it won't print as well, so you should still use 72 pixels per inch, just like everyone says. I'm afraid that's still not the case. As long as the number of pixels in the image has not changed, then the image itself is not changed. Pixels per inch just tells a printer what size the pixels should be printed. Telling a printer the pixels should be big doesn't take up any more memory than telling a printer the pixels should be small. If the number of pixels remains the same, then the file size remains the same and the quality of the image has not changed. To prove this, let's try changing the pixels per inch in Photoshop and see what happens. As we already know, this image has been sized to 1200 by 800 pixels, so it was resampled and many pixels were thrown away from the 6720 by 4480 pixels that were in the original 32 megapixel file. It's now much smaller than it was, so it'll load faster on the web and it will not print as large with the same detail. But now let's go to image, image size to open the image sizing window. It tells me that it is indeed 1200 by 800 pixels and that the resolution is currently set to 72 pixels per inch. But what happens if I were to change the pixels per inch? To change the pixels per inch without adding or subtracting pixels, which would change how big the image is, I first need to uncheck the resample box. Immediately, Photoshop changes pixels to inches because without resampling, the number of pixels is not going to change. Up here, Photoshop shows us that the image is still 1200 by 800 pixels big and that the file size is about 5.5 megabytes. Now, if I change the pixels per inch to 300, the size the image will print does change as we would expect. Smaller pixels produce a smaller print. But notice that the file size and the total number of pixels didn't change at all. What this tells us is, is that at 300 pixels per inch, someone could make a high resolution print, but it would only be four inches wide, barely bigger than wallet size. And at 72 PPI, they could make a nearly 17 inch wide print, but at 72 pixels per inch, we'd see the pixels. Regardless of what pixel per inch setting is used, the file size doesn't change and the number of pixels doesn't change. In fact, there's no change to the image at all. You could post the 72 PPI version and anyone could bring it into Photoshop and change it to 300 PPI. And if you post a 300 PPI version, anyone could bring it into Photoshop and change it to 72 PPI. Whichever way you slice it, it's still the same 1200 by 800 pixels. Take a look at these two images here on my website. They are both exactly the same size on screen. They take a similar amount of time to load and they both have equal sharpness and detail. They're both 1500 pixels wide by 1000 pixels tall, but one of them was saved at 72 PPI and the other one was saved at 300 PPI. Can you tell which is which? And let's try this. Let's save both of them to my computer. And now I have them open here in Photoshop. And you can see they're both the same size on screen. So which one's 72 PPI and which one's 300? Well, let's find out. So this one is 300 PPI, but we can see it's 1500 pixels by 1000 pixels and 4.3 megabytes. And this one is 72 PPI, but it's still 1500 by 1000 pixels and 4.3 megabytes. So there's no difference between those. And if I wanted to, I could change this one to 300 pixels per inch 
and it would print now at five inches wide, which is exactly what this one that was already 300 PPI would print at. So they're the same. The bottom line is when sizing images for the web, the number of pixels is all you need to worry about. The pixel per inch setting doesn't change the image one bit. All it does is tell a printer what size to print those pixels. If someone asks specifically for an image file that will produce an 8x12 print when printed at 300 pixels per inch, then you should go ahead and size the image to those specific parameters with the resample box checked. But if they ask for a 1920 by 1080 pixel image at 300 pixels per inch, so it'll have a higher resolution on their screen, you can either try to explain to them why the PPI of the image doesn't matter, or you can go through the motions and save it with 300 pixels per inch just to make them happy. So that's my story on why 72 pixel per inch web images is a myth, and I'm sticking to it. Thanks for tuning in. Reminding you to like, comment, share, subscribe, and or click the bell seems obvious, but apparently it's a good thing to do because it does help out and I know I forget otherwise. Okay, that's a wrap. Take care and I'll see you next time.